so today we are going to discuss various structural components of bacterial cell uh, the first structural component is the flagellum or flagella so flagella are longer slender thin hair like cytoplasmic appendages which are found in case of motile bacteria flagella is about 3 to 20 micrometer in length and 0.01 to 0.02 micrometer in diameter it is a dedicated organ of locomotion and it is found in case of motile bacterial cells only non motile cells they don't have the flagella and flagella is the organ of locomotion and those cells which lack the flagella they are obviously non motile so based on the different arrangements of flagella present on the cells the cells can be divided into these different types if single polar flagellum is present the cells are called as monotricate mono means one so this is single polar flagellum the cells like pseudomonas aeruginosa they have the only one flagella then comes the lophotricus arrangement of flagella what is lophotricus arrangement two or more than two flagella present on one end of the bacterial cell this type of morphology is called as lophotricate arrangement of flagella and the bacterium is lophotricus bacterium pseudomonas fluorescens it is the classical example of lophotricate arrangement of flagella sometimes the flagella it is present all over the external periphery of the bacterial cell this type of arrangement is called as peritricate arrangement <coughs> and the cells Uh, mainly the enteric cells like salmonella typhi ischemia coli they are having the peritricate arrangement sometimes the flagella is present either as a single flagellum on both the ends of the cell or uh, more than two flagella or tuft of flagella on either end of the bacterial cell this arrangement is called as amphitricous arrangement of flagella and the bacterium is amphitricate bacteria aquaspirillum serpens is an example of amphitricate bacteria the exact structure of the flagellum the flagella is mainly composed of three basic part uh, the outer filament hook and the basal body so this is the filament the tip of the filament it constantly grows the filament is mainly composed of protein monomeric units which are called as flagellae so these proteins they have the molecular weight that is 20000 to 40000 dalton the filament is attached to the slightly broader hook and the hook is connected to the basal body so as you can see here in case of gram negative cells there we have the outer lipopolysaccharide layer we have the peptidoglycan layer we have the gap between the cell wall and cell membrane which is periplasmic gap or semi gap semi position and we have the cell membrane or plasma membrane so the basal body of gram negative bacteria contains four rings l it represents outermost lipopolysaccharide layer p represents the peptidoglycan layer which is the backbone of bacterial cell wall s represents the space or a gap between the cell wall and cell membrane or semi position and m represents membrane that is phospholipid bilayer membrane in case of gram positive cells only two layers are visible that is the peptidoglycan layer and the membrane layer fimbri these are organ of adhesions these are small hair like microfibrils they are 1/10th in size as compared to the flagella uh, 0.5 to 2 micron long and 5 to 7 nanometer diameter these are the dimensions of fimbri Uh, nearly 100 200 fimbri are present in case of uh, gram negative bacteria and only one or two specialized fimbri are used for genetic exchange which are called as pili the sex pilus is also called as conjugation tube which is useful for conjugation of bacteria now what is conjugation the extra copy of the dna which is called as plasmid dna the one bacteria it possesses that extra copy is called as the donor bacteria or male bacteria 
it can transfer that copy extra copy to some recipient cell for this transfer the bridge which is required in between the two cells it is formed by the pillars and those pillai they are called as sex pillai so these are the specialized fimbries additionally the fimbri are antigenic they have uh, ability to stimulate antibody production and uh, the they can induce the hemagglutination reaction or some other reaction bacteriological capsules sometimes the cells or bacterial cells they are capsulated so the cells they secrete amorphous organic exopolymers these polymers they deposit outside the cell forming a slime layer so capsule it is nothing but a slimy gummy outer genus coating a slime layer which is protecting the cells is called as capsule if it is 0.2 micron thick it is called as micro capsule if the thickness is more than 0.2 micron then it is called as macro capsule capsules are sometimes composed of complex polysaccharides polypeptides or uh, the heteropolysaccharides like hyaluronic acid the main ingredient which is present in the capsule is 90% of moisture so capsule it is also called as bound water as more than 90% of it is water and remaining 10% is either a complex polysaccharide the capsules of clebsiella or pneumoni they are basically the complex polysaccharide type capsule polypeptide type capsules the capsules of bacillus anthracis and the capsules of cells like streptococcus pyogenes they are hyaluronic acid containing capsules and these capsules they are very very useful for protection of bacteria so capsule perform various functions like it protects the cells from drying it serve as a reserve source of water reserve source of food when the sugars or carbohydrates are not present the sugars which are present in the capsule they are utilized and that is why the capsules have the synonym that is glycocalyx or sugar coat so the sugars which are present in the water surrounding the cells in the form of slime layer that sugar is utilized when the cells are subjected to starvation other significant uh, uses of capsule that is the cells they remain protected from phagocytosis the macrophages or monocytes which are the major uh, line of defense the main line of defense in our body these cells they are called as phagocytic cells as they engulf and kill the invading parasite but if the cells if they are capsulated they can survive the phagocytosis they can retain the viability even after the phagocytosis even after the release from some the phagocytic cell and most importantly the capsules they prevent the attachment of bacterial viruses the viruses which can attack the bacterial cells they cannot attach themselves on the bacterial cell wall because the cell wall is protected by the slime layer which is called as capsule so we have already discussed the functions the cell wall it is the outermost covering protecting the bacterial cells most of the times the cell wall is the outermost covering in case of the non capsulated bacteria it is the outermost covering uh, it provides structural integrity to bacterial cells the cells they have a definite shape and size because they are surrounded by a rigid cell wall the cell wall of bacteria it is mainly composed of peptidoglycan or it is also called as mucopeptide so it is a cross linked structure of diamino pimeric acid uremic acid and tocoic acid so here we have this uh, peptidoglycan of staphylococcus aureus the g represents n acetyl glucosamine m represents n acetyl uremic acid so this uremic acid moieties and glucosamine glucos Uh, glucosamine moieties they are present uh, bound to one another so these uh, glycosidic linkages they hold these moieties together the muramic acid moieties are connected to tetrapeptide side chains 
side chain which contains uh, these four amino acids l alanine d glutamine l lysine and d alanine and these tetrapeptide side chains are again linked to one another by pentaglycine cross bridges so here you can see these are the pentaglycine cross bridges five glycine uh, moieties combined together and form this pentaglycine cross bridge which holds this tetrapeptide side chains together and these tetrapeptide side chains are again holding the muramic acid moieties which are linked to uh, the glucosamine moieties so n acetyl glucosamine it is connected to n acetyl muramic acid by the alpha 14 or alpha 16 glycosidic linkage and these muramic acid moieties are held by the tetrapeptide side chains which are linked to one another by pentaglycine cross bridges so this is how the uh, the structure is highly cross linked highly uh, rigid this structure is called as peptide like sometimes the ticoic acid or mucoticoic acid is also present in case of some cells here we can see the cells the n acetyl glucosamine moieties they are connected to n acetyl muramic acid so these are the monomeric units which are found in case of the peptide glycan the n acetyl muramic acid moieties are connected to tetrapeptide side chains and these tetrapeptide side chains are connected to one another by pentaglycine cross bridges so this is how the structure looks this is about the cell wall here you can see the clear difference between the gram positive and gram negative bacterial cell wall so in case of gram positive bacteria we can see only two layers are there this is the cell wall layer which mainly contains peptide glycan ticoic acid lipoticoic acid and some of the surface as well as integral proteins and we have this cytoplasmic layer or a phospholipid bilayer which is called as periplasm or cytoplasmic membrane the gram negative cells they have relatively complex structure uh, the outermost lipopolysaccharide layer is present Uh, at the base of this lipopolysaccharide layer we have the lipid a portion then we have the uh, cell cell wall there is a clear gap visible between the cell wall and cell membrane which is called as periplasmic gap and uh, here we have the peptide glycan but the peptide glycan concentration of uh, gram negative bacterial cell wall is very low here we have the phospholipid bilayer which is similar to that of the gram positive cells so these are the differences which we see in case of the gram positive and gram negative bacteria here we have some animation how the gram staining is done some day later i will be going to show you that the next structural component of the bacterial cell is the cytoplasmic membrane it is the innermost uh, membrane interior it is found uh, in the in the inner part of the cell wall the second outermost covering of the bacteria which protects the cytoplasm and inner organelles uh, basically it is a semi permeable membrane which is mainly composed of phospholipids which constitute about 20 to 30% of that membrane and 60 to 70% of it it is mainly composed of proteins Uh, some of them they are surface proteins and most of them they are integral proteins so here you can see this is the surface protein and the protein which is shown here it is the integral protein this is another example of integral protein shown uh, the thickness of bacterial cytoplasmic membrane is 5 to 10 nanometer and the main job of uh, bacterial cytoplasmic membrane is to regulate the movement of solute across it so inflow of nutrients and outflow of waste it is regulated by cytoplasmic membrane and these cells bacterial cells they divide from the central mesosome from where the membrane starts uh, separation so invagination of membrane and there is a splitting of the cells occur that is why the cytoplasmic membrane is the main thing which is responsible for what for the cell splitting or binary fission then we have the cytoplasm or periplasm it is the suspension of organic and inorganic solute uh, 
there are some organelles present like the ribosomes so here ribosomes are shown these ribosomes are 70s ribosomes and they are the sites where the protein synthesis occurs uh, the cells they lack the higher organelles like mitochondria chloroplast lysosome golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum just like the eukaryotic cells and uh, these cells they have some other organelles instead of these special organelles sometimes the bacterial cells they have metachromatic granules or some volatile granules which are uh, basically the reserve sources of phosphate in some aerobic cells uh, there are some food granules present for example phb granules these are poly beta hydroxy beta red granules which is another reserve carbon source or energy source and in some aquatic bacteria we also have the gas vacuoles and because of the gas vacuoles which are present in some cells it is possible for them to float in the water so this is about the structure of bacteria the dna of bacterial cell it is a genome which is a single double stranded circular chromosome and the dna it is about 1000 micrometer long a dna is not surrounded by any membrane that is absence of nucleus and this dna is a haploid dna and it replicates by simple fission sometimes the bacteria they also have some additional copies of the dna those are called as plasmids so here you can see this is the main circular chromosome it is called as nucleate dna and additional to this we have some additional copies of the dna those are called as plasmid dna sometimes the bacteria they have the egg like dormant structure produced within the cell which is one per cell it is called as spore so here the diagram of a spore is shown spores are metabolically dormant life forms they are thick walled highly refractile and very resistant so these structures they are resistant to almost everything they are resistant to extreme of cold weather extreme of high temperature these spores they are resistant to even the toxic chemicals sometimes these spores they are resistant to uh, presence of uh, some toxic chemicals like phenol or some acids sometimes the spores they protect the cell dna or some sensitive enzyme from the radiation so they are highly refractile or highly resistant and these spores they can retain the potency they can remain potent or viable for centuries so this is another important property of spores the spores they are mainly classified based on their uh, position within the cell there are central spores there are sub terminal spores and terminal spores terminal spores are present at one end of the bacterial cell central spores are present at the center of the bacterial cell and sub terminal is somewhere in between the center and the terminal end of the bacteria the spores they are sometimes thicker than the mother vessels they are called as bulging spores often they are non bulging that is their thickness is small as compared to the mother vessels and sometimes the spores they are covered by some sporangium or some sac they are called as enveloped spores or sporangiospores sometimes the spores are not surrounded by any uh, sac like structure they are called as conidiospores or naked spores so this is about the structural components of the bacterial cell we have discussed each and every component in detail